Hey friends, my name is Brian Douglas and I'm gonna to talk to you about getting traction with GitHub Actions in Python. So GitHub Actions is a feature that's been available to you uh, in your GitHub repositories for the past couple of years now, since 2018. And it's a combination of a bunch of different things that you probably didn't know were inside of GitHub Actions, but if you haven't used them, GitHub Action is all about workflow automation. Now, a lot of folks focus on continuous integration or running your test, but I'm gonna talk about a little bit more. But before I jump into that, I wanna talk about primitives at GitHub and how GitHub Actions is a combination of all these different primitives. So one of the primitives being the API, you have, you have the connection directly to the API inside your repository to do some automation in your workflow. Webhooks, authentication, those are other two things that it's combined into GitHub Actions to allow you to sort of optimize or over-index and, and sort of improve workflow for you, for other people on the team, contributors. And I wanna build this on this with an analogy, which is, a, it's a basketball analogy, so bear with me. But basketball, it's a sport, it's a popular sport, at least in the US, it's a global sport as well. And uh, the object of the game is basically get the ball into the opponent's net or the hoop. And with this, there's five people on, on the court uh, on each team, so five on five. And every now and then there could be one person who sort of just takes the ball and becomes like the ball hog or in the context of developers, like maybe not a hog, but like the cowboy coder who everybody sort of waits around to sort of solve the problems for. Uh, hopefully that's not the teams you're working on. If not, you should definitely look for ways to improve that workflow. And one way you can improve that workflow is identifying places that could be improved. Um, and I bring this up because there's this idea of hooponomics where you apply statistics into the game of basketball. Uh, so they basically took every single point on the court and identif identified where was the highest rated percentage place where you can shoot or attempt a shot and have it go in. And they call this place Area 31. Now Area 31 is the name because 31% of the shots attempted from this point on the court go in. And this happens to do with like most NBA players are right-handed. Uh, also, depending on the height, it's kind of a difficult shot to defend because you could just you know throw it over the person's head in a nice perfect arc and it goes in. Don't want to get too much detail about basketball, but the thing is, if you know this is a point on the court that you can you can over-index or you can automate to your plays or to get players to that point then you could sort of strategize and say, okay, well, we're gonna get this ball passed in, we're gonna get it to number two, and number two is gonna attempt the shot, number three is gonna get the rebound. So like, it's all stuff you can do in basketball, but in the context of developers, you identify repetitive tasks, you identify places to optimize or automate, so that way you don't have to wait for deploys to, to be deployed before you can have your weekend. Uh, you can deploy on Friday with confidence. Um, and. I bring that up because there's, there's gonna be a couple different use cases and things that I'll, I'll share about actions that hopefully be outside the realm uh, of maybe what you were thinking with GitHub Actions. Now, when you go into your repository, if you have no GitHub Actions at all, you can click the Action tab, it will present with, to you um, with this, this uh, <laughs> starter workflows. Uh, so these are a bunch of Python starter workflows, uh, and they're available to you to embed in, directly into your, your repository. And if you click any of these, you'll get a file like this, which is a YAML file. Uh, and this is a basic Python CI file, which gives you the ability to run linting and test uh, inside your Python project. So you could also run a matrix of different versions of Python too, which is like shout out 3.9. Like where did that come from? I haven't, I haven't actually used Python regularly um, since last summer uh, on a project. But what I'm getting at is that I'm super honored to be here. And I want to mention this because this is, an opportunity for you to all strategize on your team in the project to be able to say, okay, well, the CI is now set, whether you're using GitHub Actions or if you're using some other CI tool, like those are solved problems. Like this definitely embed that into your project. And then that way everybody's better because of that. But the thing I want to bring up is like, what's more than just CI? And the thing that I always do whenever I deploy something to production is I don't really care about performance, which is an unfortunate thing. But like I do a lot of web apps, a lot of web development uh, using um, front end tooling. And there's this tool called Lighthouse, which is built by the Chrome team. And it identifies opportunities for improvement for performance or accessibility. Uh, and by having this tool, it actually gives me ideas of like where I can improve or where I can sort of focus on next time I ship a feature for my, my website or my blog. And the thing I don't do is I don't ever run this or ever think to run this unless someone has a problem with the site. 
Uh, what I love about this is that this actually runs every time I open up a pull request. So with GitHub webhooks uh, based on pull request, uh, those are embedded into GitHub Actions. So I can say every time a pull request is open, run the Lighthouse action, give me a score. And I'll show you more details of that in a sec, but I bring that up because these are all opportunities for collaboration at scale. You can scale your team. Perhaps you're a small project that only has a couple contributors, or maybe you're the only contributor. If you can scale the team or scale these interactions to the point where anybody can contribute, it doesn't have to be a, a no, doesn't have to have the knowledge base of all of Docker or all of whatever tools you're using. Just automate those things that anybody can, can approach the project uh, with these. And I like this because, uh, well. I'll introduce myself. I'm Brian Douglas. I, I joke that I'm a Beyonce advocate, mainly because I love bringing more people to the fold. I love that Beyonce has been a mentor to Chloe and Hallie, who are now superstars, and one of them is going to be starring in The Little Mermaid. I forget which one's which. But what I'm getting at is, like, there's always opportunity to bring more people up, bring more people into the fold. And I, I, I'm a big fan of Beyonce. I, just, I don't think I need to apologize for that. But I love building small projects, one being the Baybot. Now, this is a project I built that's a simplistic JavaScript and HTML project that simply this interacts with Twitch chat. And I built this because I wanted to build a simple project on GitHub Pages that I can approach. Speaking of simple projects, I built another project um, leveraging just YAML files uh, and also some quick scripts to build the top eight page from MySpace, but on my GitHub profile. And I did that powered by a GitHub Action. Uh, using things like the setup Python, uh, it gives you an environment to write Python scripts and have those run every time you open a pull request, every time you open an issue. In my case, every time someone opens an issue, they get, get an issue template that allows them to add themselves to my top eight. The other thing I like to, to focus on is like, how do I improve the experience for issue management? Now, every year this thing happens called Hacktoberfest. I get a lot of contributions through Hacktoberfest, and I enjoy it because I'm a small project maintainer, and it's a way for me to sort of bring more people in the fold. So in anticipation of this, I built this action called Take Action, which allows anybody in the repository to assign themselves an issue. And I do this intentionally because a lot of the conversations I have back and forth with Hacktoberfest contributors is like, is this available? Can I work on this? And in my contributing.md, I say, if it's unassigned, you can work on it. This assign yourself, let me know if you have any questions. And I, I sort of try to over-index and optimize that I'm gonna get contributors during October. So I might as well make it easy for them to sort of read the guide, assign themselves an issue, work on the project, find documentation on how to contribute, and then we can sort of move on and we can continue to progress with hopefully them sticking around as being regular contributors. Uh, and this is the actual action that I, I've written. It's written in Bash. Uh, it's using, yeah, some pretty <laughs> uh, generic Bash stuff uh, and also uh, providing the action environment. The runner provides me GitHub tokens as well as event paths. And it's all stuff I have access to to be able to assign some of the issue. Now, the one thing I want to point out is that I didn't think of this action. This action came from a conversation I had with the Pandas project, and, and they wrote this first. Uh, they wrote it a little different than I did because uh, they, they are better developers than I am, uh, but I was able to take their context and what they wrote and apply it to my project uh, just by simply copying and pasting. Who would have thought? But <laughs> what I'm getting at is that all these GitHub actions, they're all open source. They're available for you to read. You can check out my project's actions. Uh, you could, I can check out your project's actions, and we can all learn and grow better. Like the, the term is like all, the rising tide is raising all boats. So I don't have to like, beg you for your you know proprietary ci tool or automation tool to check to see what how you sort of fix things it's all embedded inside your github repository speaking of which one thing i love doing about around since i got a little more co contributions in october is using this action called a release drafter uh, and it basically does that it drafts up your release based on whatever gets merged to the default main branch and you can see here, depending on I had a, a field day a couple months ago in my project, but I'm able to organize that and we can showcase to see, okay, well, we bumped this version of that and that version of that. And then we have a couple fixes that I'm able to sort of orchestrate or label into a different section. And this is all in the power of Release Drafter. Um, so again, open source, you can check it out. It's a free project, it's open sourced. Um, and I love that, that I'm able to sort of have a solved problem with not even knowing that releases was something I wasn't even building was a problem. I mentioned briefly uh, Jake Jarvis's Lighthouse action. This action I love, it's open sourced, 
but it also inside your action logs provide you your White House score. So here I can see every time a PR is opened, there's a White House score. So if I want to go to, back to all the PRs that were merged, the last 10 of them, I can go check all the logs and see which one has a PR or has a score that went up or down so we can have context. Uh, this is super powerful. You'd also um, create an action to print this as a comment on your PR as well if you don't want to dig in the logs. Or you can upload an artifact, a downloadable file to be able to check that out as well. I can't go through all the tips, uh, but I do have a YouTube account, youtube.com slash bdougie. I have a tips and tricks playlist. Check it out. If you're interested, I made MySpace in 2020, uh, which is what I mentioned up front. I really hope that you enjoy GitHub Action and say, hopefully this sort of got the wheels turning. Uh, and these are my social handles. Enjoy the rest of the conference.